Okay, so last month I did my monthly grocery haul and I had this idea that I was going to try to cut out the sugary snacks, the processed foods, and try to get our kids on board with a more whole food, natural, snacking, food eating lifestyle. Here's how it's going. One Unified Home. This is where we come to talk about ways to unify our family, whether it's through our finances, through our lifestyle, through having fun. This is where we talk about all the hard things and the fun things to strengthen family. So if you want to have a stronger bond within your home, have a feeling of peace and love in your home, click that subscribe button. I promise you it's fun. It's not that serious. That's the other thing. Like these are serious topics but we have fun figuring it out together. So anyways, if you wanna figure that out with us, click subscribe and um, let's get going. Okay, so like I said, I did a grocery haul. You can see everything that I bought in that video, the prices and then like the thought process behind it, all that stuff. Okay, so here's how it's going. First of all, you might need to know I have a 12 year old girl and then my boys are 10 and eight. So trying to change their lifestyle and habits at this point in life, 12, 10, and eight years into life, when also they don't have an adult brain to process the long-term benefits of making that change, is a little bit difficult. So we're half, halfway through that month of grocery shopping and what I did is I just didn't buy quite as many processed snacks thinking I'm gonna use that saved budget to invest in fresh produce. And here's how it's going. I have heard almost on a daily basis that we have no food in the house and there's just nothing to eat. You know, you know what I'm saying? And if you look inside of our pantry, what do we have here? I, I did not go through this. This is empty. Why do they just leave empty boxes everywhere? These are all the things that no one wants to eat and are left over for months and months and months. So we have some Cheetos, cheddar ruffles, same thing in here, Cheetos, cheddar ruffles, trail mix, stale chips. Okay, I should do a, I should do a pantry clean out. That's what I should do. Bunny crackers, empty, empty. Okay, the last place that I have pantry storage is out in the garage, so let's head that way and I'll show you what's left. Okay, these are our storage that we have out here because we live in a small house and we don't really have anything, so we've got some sun chips, some peanut butter. What else do we have in here? Graham crackers, graham crackers, Triscuits, Cheez-Its. There's those cheddar ruffles again. They must not like those. And again, cheddar ruffles, Cheetos, and some granola. Okay, let's start here. Does anybody in your family have any of these things? You, your kids, your spouse, ADHD, fatty liver disease, extreme mood swings, type two diabetes, dementia, asthma. So I listened to this podcast this morning from um, Carolyn, I believe her name is, from Just Ingredients. Oh my goodness. She has a podcast, she's on Instagram. Let's link all of those things down below for you so that way you can, um, and we'll specifically link this podcast episode where she interviews this doctor and what they're doing is they're talking about how specifically what we're using to feed and fuel our bodies can affect and cause all of these things. And I've read other books and other things. And here's the thing. We don't want to make decisions based off of fear. We want to make decisions based off of facts and knowledge. So let's be careful with what information we're consuming. And I am a God-loving woman, and so I do believe in prayer. And so as I'm consuming information and trying to um, educate myself, I find sources that I trust, and I do pray about these things. I pray about my groceries. Yes, I do. And I'm like, okay, God, Heavenly Father, I want to make this change in my life, and this is what I think I should do. And then I ponder and think throughout my day, try to find quiet moments. Anyways, whoa, this is quite a tangent. And what we're trying to do is figure out fact from fiction. What is gonna work for our family? And we have different behavioral, also physical health needs in our family. 
like one of my kids is really struggling with emotions at school like the stress of school in elementary school is really getting to this child and causing these extreme mood um things and a lot of it has to do with focus and so um they're talking about how the nutrition that we're feeding our body can really have a huge impact in this oh come on you have to listen to this podcast episode turn it on while you're doing the dishes while you're driving the kids around to carpool like please listen to it because it has all of the statistics the numbers the facts of like how all of these different things asthma diabetes um adhd fatty liver disease all of these things are going up in our kids and in us as adults and that there are some strong ties not all ties but strong ties to what we're doing and they talk about things like gluten is a one that we've been hearing about more and more but also like oh, the sugar that we're taking in um the processed foods that we're taking in the artificial flavors and dyes that we're taking into our bodies. So I was going to just go take the kids to Walmart and we were gonna just buy all of the normal snacks that we normally have in the house, all the processed, sugary, yada yada, the yada foods. But then I listened to that podcast this morning and I'm like, holy cow, what am I doing? And so I'm gonna move forward with a different approach. It can't just be all or nothing. And also, so I, what I'm saying is I can't just cut everything out all of a sudden and expect my family to be okay with that. I think there's a way to approach teaching my kids about nutrition. I'm not going to sit them down and spout out all of these facts to them, like 30% of children have this and this can cause this. I think there's a more realistic approach to teach our kids that will actually stick with them. And then I need to make it easier for them to make a better choice. It's like good, better, best, right? So I can't just be like, yeah, Mav, my eight-year-old, go ahead and ha cut up that watermelon real quick and eat it for a snack. When they come home from school especially, or when they're packing their lunches in the morning and we're kind of rushed, like it needs to be a lot more simple and easy to grab and go because that's what they like about the pantry food is it's just grab and go and easy. So thinking through all of these things, that's where I'm gonna make changes. Here, Here's it in a nutshell, like do you you care about this and I just want you to be honest please just go down in the comments and just tell me if this is interesting to you if you would like to learn more about this as our family's doing this because I am taking on the challenge of figuring out how to make this transition with older kids because my kids aren't toddlers and they aren't babies and I feel like it would be easier if I started this transition back then when they really like didn't have an opinion now I've got a household a household full of opinions and I feel like it's harder to make this transition with my kids being a little bit older. But I don't think it's impossible. And I think there are some small inc incremental tra transitions, realistic approaches that we can do to making this shift. And I already see some mistakes that I've made in this month. So as we move forward, I'm wondering what you're thinking. Um, if you think it'd be interesting to follow along in this, because I am happy to share this journey if you think it's something that would be useful and helpful to you and your family. As we're trying to make this transition, Hubby and I have already started on this journey, the two of us together. In the last two years, man, we have really changed the way we look at the food that we use to eat and fuel our bodies. We've still got a long way to go, but we are doing really good. But now the challenge is to get our kids on board. You know what I mean? It's gonna be tricky. And I don't think it's a zero to 60 thing, and I don't think that they're going to end in one year eating a plate full of broccoli. I just don't think that's gonna happen. Maybe not even in the next 10 years when we start having our babies leave the house. I don't think it's gonna happen then either, but I do think we can set them up for a brighter future, a more successful, healthy future. So let me know, is this interesting? Yes. Or you're like, no thank you, I'm just gonna move forward with my microwave popcorn and just <laughs> keep living my life. And that's totally good too. You do you. This is what our family's journey is looking at, like right now. And I wanna know, like, is it helpful? Is it interesting to you? If I continue to occasionally document this to share with you here on YouTube. So, let me know down in the comments. Hey, we're, linking the, we're linking that podcast episode. I'll also link Just Ingredients, that's Carolyn's account on Instagram. Um, I She has all these other products that use clean ingredients, nothing that disrupts hormones or the way our body is supposed to function. Our, I really, really, really appreciate all the work that she puts into this. So 
Um, I'll link both of those resources down below if you're interested. Okay, let me know what you think. Give this video a thumbs up if you've watched it to the end and you are still hanging out with us. Please leave your opinion down in the comments. Interesting, not interesting? What do you think about making this transition, especially with older kids? Maybe for the first time with you and your spouse? <sighs> what are you worried about? Is it gonna work out? Do you think we can do it? Let's chat down in the comments.